My name is Joey Kawakubo. I'm an artist based in London and Tokyo as well, well going back and forth sometimes. And uh, I moved to London in 2016 and since then I've been based in London, but um, uh, I was born in Spain so, uh, and spent my first 18 years in Spain and before I moved to Japan, I studied there neuropsychology and uh, after that I married and worked in, as a financial trader in Tokyo for three years perhaps. And then I, yeah, um, I moved into photography and started my career as an artist. So before the uh, 2011 uh, Fukushima uh, incident or well accident, and well the earthquake that caused it, uh, I was more a landscape focused photographer. Uh, usually I use film, 810 film, which is quite large, I would say. So just taking this huge wooden old style camera with me and are all around and then I take photographs of different um, uh, places. But um, the earthquake and the Fukushima um, uh, 2011 um, accident changed me, my perception a lot because as an artist I remember that I, uh, at the time I was living in, in Japan, my son was just born, being born and there was a lot of uh, a social kind of anxiety, angst um, and a lot of artists as well tried to do kind of activism, others tried to raise money and in charities, I also did that. You didn't know how art could help society in that kind of very extreme situations where there is people dying every day and, and people needing food, fuel. And, and then there's a moment when as an artist you think like, what, how can I help the, uh, in this? So then uh, in one of the projects I went to the restricted area in Fukushima and at the beginning I was taking photographs and thought that uh, it might be interesting to to bury them in, inside. And in the restricted zone, uh, no one can live. Uh, it's a, like a perimeter of around 20 to 30 kilometers from the, uh, from the nuclear power plant. So it's like uh, a, an, a ghost town when um, buildings and houses are um, almost like um, left after the earthquake. So many of them are in a, in a state that no one can live. But, uh, and the area is dangerous, so you need to keep all the equipment. And then I started burying film. But then I realized that um, some of the images were very, uh, when developed, turned to be in a very low contrast and having strange colors. Uh, and, and then I realized that maybe it was uh, the effect of radiation. And then I started to bury the film without taking any exposure, just their uh, version film, and then taking it back three months later or six months later, and then processing it. And then that's how I just came with, uh, with the images, which really shocked me as well. It's a Fujifilm PN160 NS, so it's a negative film. And uh, I buried it in a place where radiation was uh, not so high, this was, uh, but uh, I tried different places with different radiation and this particular one was probably left for six months or seven, between six and seven. And the effect is not only radiation, but it's also a mold that has uh, evolved inside the film holder because it was left for such a long time and the um, gelatin silver print attracts uh, uh, a certain kind of mold and so it's very interesting because uh, uh, the color also is probably has uh, facts from radiation uh, usually uh, colors like green and yellow seem to be the ones that reflect uh, the effects of radiation. That's what I was told in, in, in the lab when I first took it. Uh, for example, if you take uh, a film into, a X -ray, into an X-ray machine in the airport, you come with, if it's a color film, you come with greenish, yellowish uh, lines, it seems. So uh, probably the, the frequency is greenish, yellowish. 
And then, yeah, we have the effects of, yeah, time, uh, weather as well. And I think it's interesting because, because of the size of the film, it's not a 35 millimeter, which is usually the one that uh, everyone has used. It's a large print. You can enlarge it and then suddenly the, the kind of sense of scale becomes really blurred. It, it, you don't know if it's really a small thing or a, mac, or, or a large thing. No, it, it, it seems like, a, like an universe. So the first time I opened it, I was really shocked and strike. Uh, yeah, it was very strikingly. Uh, I, 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 did, I didn't, I hesitated to say, to use the word beautiful because it uh, felt I felt almost guilty to kind of, to feel beauty there because you know that is something that has, is a tragedy because a lot of people have, have lost their lives and their homes and their uh, loved ones. And uh, you know that is something really dangerous, but at the same time, it's yeah, it was kind of very striking that in the end you receive a kind of a um, impression that doesn't have anything to do with those realities, which I think in terms of art is interesting, yeah, to, to question yourself what is beauty, what is, um, yeah, uh, what is the aim of art perhaps also is a, a good question that this work mm, kind of made me think about.